Hey artists, check out this piece of modern art done by Pete Mondrian. Mondrian used red, yellow, and blue, the primary colors, plus black and white, to try to create an emotional response in his viewers. He took an object or an action like dancing. This one's called Broadway Boogie Woogie. Doesn't it make you want to get up off your feet and dance? And he took that action and tried to simplify it down to its most basic components, squares, and primary colors. I think he did a pretty great job on this. This isn't our project, but we are going to be inspired by Mondrian and create an animal oops, silhouette, um, an animal of your choosing, into a Mondrian inspired inside. I can't wait to see what you do with this. Let's start off by drawing an animal of your choice. I chose a moose, so does that mean I'm creating a Mondrian Mooster piece? Yeah, you miss those jokes. I know you do. <laughs> Remember to lightly draw in pencil. This part you'll want to do on your own because you'll have a lot of different choices. Um, you can either do a search on the internet for your animal, so like raccoon and the word silhouette. Look at the directions for how to spell that because that is a wonky word to spell. Or use one of the provided animals if you uh, don't want to do a search for one. And you only need the outline. So take your time, get it right, and draw lightly until you know you've got it. When you're finished with pencil, if you happen to have a permanent marker or a sharpie at home, that does work best for this part. A black marker does work, but if you're choosing markers for the rest of it, you'll have to be really careful. Um, because if you get that black regular marker wet with the other markers, it tends to bleed a little bit. So you may want to skip this step until the very end if you're using a regular marker. A crayon or colored pencil works just fine too. Okie dokie, let's do the Mondrian part. Using a ruler, or if you don't have a ruler, you can grab the edge of a post-it note stack, or edge of a clipboard, or edge of a notebook. Be creative, because sometimes, if you're like me, I can't find a ruler when I'm at home, so I have to problem solve. Draw a series of vertical, those are the straight up and down lines, and horizontal, those are the across lines. Do a bunch of those. They can go all the way across or they can stop and start part way. We want to have rectangles and squares. That's our goal. When you're finished drawing, go ahead and sharpie those if you have a sharpie. If not, again, problem solve and find something that will work for you. Uh, Mondrian uses very thick black lines. So I went in and made some of my lines thicker. You'll see later on in the video, I end up adding more lines as I'm coloring. Bust out those primary colors. Yep, you guessed it. Red, yellow, and blue. That's what Pete Mondrian used. And he pretty much exclusively used red, yellow, and blue. You might be thinking that's kind of boring, but Mondrian was all about simplifying things and breaking objects down into their most basic shapes in order to get you to feel something. Red, yellow, and blue combined with black and white, if we were mixing paint, are the five most powerful colors you can have. You can make virtually any color with red, yellow, blue, because we know that we can make the secondary and the tertiary colors from those. And if we added white with paint, we could make them lighter, black would make them darker, if we mix black and white, we get gray, and we can gray out those same colors. So you can end up with thousands of colors from just these five if we were mixing paint. Now, as you're coloring these squares, it's totally fine to leave some white spaces. They're not white spaces per se, but they're using white as a color. I kind of started to work in just one section to get the balance just right. The balance of colors is how many reds per blues per yellows, making it feel like it's whole and complete. Some artists use asymmetrical balance where maybe they use one yellow in their entire piece and everything else is full of other colors. 
Um, for Mondrian usually had pretty balanced pieces. Now he didn't necessarily count exactly how many reds, yellows, and blues he had, but he just wanted it to feel whole and complete. As I'm working, I decided I needed some more black lines. It's fine if you end up tweaking um, as you're working and saying, hey, these two colors are too close together. I need additional space in between. So it looks pretty great so far, but sometimes you get little smudgies on that white piece of paper. Um, this part is completely optional. Your paper might be nice and clean, but I know that the marker loves to stick to my fingers. And then it smudges on my paper. <laughs> I was slightly regretting my choice of a mousse, because there are, there are a whole lot of little tiny tiny pieces to cut out. So this took me a little while with my scissors, but in the end it was so worth it. I cut all the way around the mousse, and notice I'm cutting chunks off. That kind of frees up my scissors to do their thing. Um, feel free to kind of loosely cut around your animal first, and then go back in and fine-tune. Don't just leave it with those big, ugly white spaces in there. If you're cutting yours out, do a good job. Then, you can glue stick, or use a glue bottle, I like glue stick for something like this, onto a piece of colored paper, if you have that at home. It'll make your Mondrian Mooster piece look very professional. And don't forget to send me a photo of your artwork, because I love seeing your sweet face with your art. <laughs>